Hey, good morning, Westplex. It's time for What About Nutrition, the show that explores the link between nutrition and optimum health and asks the overlooked question, what about nutrition? Now, every day there's more scientific evidence and research regarding the critical importance of nutrition for you and your family and the promotion of optimum health. On What About Nutrition, this radio show will focus on dietary supplements, herbs, vitamins, and homeopathic remedies, what they are, what they do, and how to use them. We'll also discuss diet, exercise, and other aspects of living a healthy lifestyle in the 21st century. Your host is David Gall, Mr. Nutrition, owner of O'Fallon Nutrition, a graduate of Washington University and Huntington College of Health Sciences Comprehensive Nutrition Program. I'm Steve Casper with you from Westplex Broadcasting, and uh, I guess kind of like the uh, engineer co-host type of thing here. The straight man, maybe. No, maybe. You're the straight man. I'm the... Well, I'm not very good at it, but you're the comic relief. I'm the comic relief in most cases, right? <laughs> Remember, always consult your healthcare practitioner before the beginning of any new supplements uh, or any other changes to your lifestyle. The purpose of the show is to inform, educate, and entertain. Uh, uh, we do our best, and not to diagnose, treat, or prevent any disease. All right, we got the uh, the disclaimers and the business out of the way. Welcome, to everybody, to What About Nutrition a program that's been on Westplex Radio now for several uh, weeks. Uh, we're always on uh, Saturday mornings at ten o'clock on Westplex News Talk 94.1 from 10 to 10.30 and on Westplex 100.7 playing What Do We Feel Like on Sunday mornings at 10. So just remember 10 a.m. on Saturday, Westplex News Talk 94.1 and on Sundays at Westplex 100.7 FM. Good morning, David. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. How about yourself today? I'm. You can tell I'm up. I'm feeling good. Yeah, I, went out, I did go out and get some GABA. Oh, yes. I got some GABA and I've got some... Uh, this and some of that, and been taking your advice, and man, that's you. Re, you really know what you're talking about. Oh, man. I appreciate really, really it. Good. Steve. Yeah. Maybe that, that tyrosine that you started that might have you up today. Then, well, <laughs> no, you know, I got to admit that it's a it's a double extra shot of an espresso. Oh, that'll do it too. From the new Scooters Coffee House in on Mid Rivers Drive. Actually, you know what? I have a comment on Scooters. I saw yeah. that Scooters mm-hmm. is awesome, and mm-hmm. um, I'm originally from Omaha, Nebraska, uh-huh. and every time we go home, Omaha is crawling with these little Scooters coffee kiosks. Really, we uh, like them so much. When we got back recently, my wife and I were like, oh, we, we need a scooters. And then we uh, Googled them and realized that this new one's on Mid Rivers Mall Drive. I know. And, they, and they're working with the radio station. Are they and really? Yeah. And I stopped by and they gave me a free tall. And they said, you want an extra shot with that, Mr. Casper? <laughs> I said, Heck yes. Uh, Definitely. No, it's good stuff. I mean, Scooters really makes a heck of an espresso shot. They had, uh, in Omaha, we really love to get the uh, lattes, and mm-hmm. we get them with, like, one raw sugar, so it's not too bad, but really yeah. tastes good. This program brought to you by Scooters, <laughs> now on Mid-Rivers Mall Drive. Uh, no, but, you know, I, I got to admit, this has got to be the reason why. I'm I got to give them a plug um, with that Omaha link. So. You know, and I didn't realize they were that, but, and, you know, truthfully, they are, uh, I would like to see them because they are lower prices, lower prices yes. than that star Yes, very place. well run, very yeah. well run. All right. Well, what we got today? Well, today I think we'd uh, like to talk about adrenals and adrenal gland health and uh, this concept that people hear about called adrenal exhaustion. Mm -hmm. And this goes along with things that we've talked about in recent weeks, like uh, particularly hypoglycemia or blood sugar issues. And also we've talked about brain chemistry and things like that. And I want to remind everybody that those shows are archived right now at www.ofallonnutrition.com. We have the brain chemistry show up there. We have the hypoglycemia show and uh, if you hadn't had a chance to hear them they're really uh, worth a listen Um, so anyways let's get right into it so the adrenals are glands that sit on top of our kidneys and um, the adrenals we talked about a couple weeks ago have to kick in when our blood sugar falls the adrenals job is to catch the falling blood sugar so it doesn't get too low if our blood sugar does get too low we go into a coma so this process that the adrenals do this function is very important Mm -hmm. So, and of course, our blood sugar crashes after it spikes. So a tiny review of that is if you eat carbohydrates or sugar alone without protein or fat or fiber, they'll be absorbed too quickly into your bloodstream. Your blood sugar will go up too high too fast. Your pancreas then has to release insulin, which I ought to point out again is made from protein. So you have to eat protein just to make insulin. Anyways, the insulin comes out. Its job is to take the blood sugar to the muscle cells, and if the muscle cells are full, 
full, then it gets stored as fat. But the result of this is that blood sugar starts to go down very quickly because of insulin's effect, and then the adrenals catch it, and they release adrenaline. And this is hard on the adrenals, so when they do this, they're, they're actually rescuing us, and it's an emergency process within the body. So the adrenal glands release adrenaline, and adrenaline causes the liver to release some stored sugar called glycogen, and that's what stabilizes our blood sugar. But so many people actually have this process happen multiple times a day that eventually their adrenals be can become what they call exhausted. Hmm. And the other thing that contributes directly to this is stress of any kind. So whether it's physical or emotional stress or somebody's going through, you know, a divorce or a move or an illness in the family or heavy schoolwork, etc., all of those things also can put stress on the adrenal glands. And the reason is that when you're under stress, your body has to be forced to keep making energy even when you're tired. Okay. You know, I'm sure you've had days, Steve, where you were tired and uh, going to work wasn't the ideal thing for you, but you had to do it, right? You got to show up and go to work. Sure. Or you've got to, you know, move to that new house. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, it's our adrenal glands that kick in with uh, adrenaline production mm -hmm. as well as uh, production of hormones like cortisol, hmm. which we can think of as slow acting adrenaline, and then even DHEA, which is kind of like. Uh, mm -hmm. The adrenal glands backup hormone. Okay. So over time, if the adrenal glands are forced to respond to low blood sugar too many times or too many stressful episodes, and often these things are going along at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, how many people have stressful jobs who have to keep themselves going with, you know, some sugar and caffeine, and particularly if they're not eating meals that have protein and some good fats in them and fiber as well, then the sugar and caffeine really wreak havoc on the adrenals. So. When we talk about adrenal exhaustion, the first stage is when the adrenals are overworking. They're overproducing hormones. They're making too much adrenaline too often and too much cortisol. And so in that first stage, we actually want to, to calm things down a little bit. And in our next show, I'm going to talk about uh, thyroid issues, which is going to be a fascinating show for everybody. And uh, one thing I want to point out is in the early stages of adrenal exhaustion, when they're actually overproducing stress hormones, often in books this is described as feeling tired but mm -hmm. wired. Oh, yeah. And I've heard you people ever experienced that? I, I really have. Sure, uh, I, I bet. I really have, but, I, I, but I've heard a lot of other – it doesn't happen to me very often, but I've mm -hmm. heard a lot of people talk about that. Yeah, so you'll have folks that, um, you know, they're, they're, they'll feel that underlying fatigue, but at the same time, they'll kind of feel wired or almost anxious. So that's the early stage of adrenal exhaustion, which is before they've lost their ability to make hormones like cortisol mm -hmm. and adrenaline. So at first, they kind of overproduce. And uh, so anyways, one of the things that can happen with the thyroid that we'll talk about in the next show is when the adrenals start to overproduce and kind of wire you with adrenaline, mm -hmm. often the thyroid gland will compensate by down-regulating itself. Hmm. So you can have people that get into this adrenal exhaustion, and then if the thyroid down-regulates, becomes slower, produces less thyroid hormone, then you can have issues like weight gain and other symptoms that uh, are oh, not wow. fun. Wow. So, um, but coming back to adrenal exhaustion, the first stage is the most common, and that's where people are tired but wired. Mm -hmm. um, if they were tested, their cortisol levels would usually be a little on the high side during this point, mm -hmm. and there are saliva hormone tests that folks can order over the internet for that, um, and some physicians offer them. So we want to talk about adrenal supporting nutrients. So in the second segment, we'll get to the later stages of adrenal exhaustion, but right now I can talk about what supports the adrenals. So there's a few nutrients. Um, chief among them is vitamin C. So 90% uh, of the vitamin C that we ingest is typically used by our adrenal glands in the body. Mm -hmm. um, animal adrenal glands are so high in vitamin C that if you are out in the wilderness dying of scurvy, they say that if you eat the adrenal glands from a animal that you've hunted, that it can actually help to prevent or treat scurvy. Wow. Um, so really interesting stuff. So vitamin C obviously is crucial for their function and their ability to manufacture hormones. Second is uh, vitamin B5, known as pantothenic acid acid. So vitamin B5 is required for the production of cortisol. And again, it's most heavily used by the adrenal glands in the body. Um, also vitamin B1, also known as thiamine, uh, 
um, really critical for blood sugar balance. And as we mentioned, if the blood sugar becomes unstable, the adrenals have to do a lot more work in order to catch okay. the crashing blood sugar. Okay, that vitamin B1 you said for, yes. uh, okay, what, what, what natural foods is that normally found in? B1 is going to be found in things like meats. It's also going to be found in whole grains. So good healthy foods like that, beans as well, are sources of some of these. But they are actually present in animal foods. Um, so uh, the B vitamins in particular, mm -hmm. you do find in animal foods like beef and chicken and things like that. Okay. But also in your whole grains and um, some of your other healthy starches like beans would be a source. Okay. Um, and your green leafy vegetables are, of course, sources of a lot of the B vitamins too. Um, and of course, vitamin C, green leafy vegetables, fruit, and if you can run across any fresh adrenal gland, it's going to have some vitamin C in it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, long story short, the B vitamins, particularly B1 and B5, as well as vitamin C, are really pretty critical for adrenal health on a basic level. And we can make the case that nutrients that support proper blood sugar balance, B1 again is one of those, but also uh, minerals such as chromium and that B vitamin biotin mm -hmm. are very important for blood sugar balance. And of course, if the blood sugar becomes unbalanced, the adrenals have to work harder. Right. So vitamin B uh, complex, vitamin C. A lot of folks can benefit from what you mentioned earlier, GABA. Uh, so if we can help them to feel more calm and uh, less overreactive. And of course, GABA kind of serves as a nutrient that mops up excess adrenaline and cortisol. Um, and th that excess adrenaline and cortisol is what can actually contribute to you feeling kind of wired mm -hmm. and have difficulty shutting down. So GABA can mop that up. So in early <coughs> stages of adrenal exhaustion, those are really helpful. In the next stage, excuse me, in the next segment, Segment, I'll also talk about the herbs that are helpful, such as rhodiola and holy basil. And then we'll talk about, well, what happens when folks have even uh, more significant severe cases of mm -hmm. adrenal exhaustion. Okay. All right. Uh, that kind of wraps up the first segment here uh, this morning on What About Nutrition? On Westplex Radio, Steve Casper with you this morning and alongside uh, Mr. Nutrition himself, David Gall of O'Fallon Nutrition, located out uh, Veterans Memorial Parkway, uh, close to JJ's Restaurant in, right. uh, in O'Fallon and Fort Zumwalt Square. Okay. And you can find them on the web anytime at www.ofallonnutrition.com. We'll be right back with part two after this.